Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Uh, let us begin with number 440. One of the challenges of having a whole list is you never know where to start. <laughs> and I'm in a whole different place in my head than I was when I wrote them down. Number 440, just uh, to open us, if you would. Now, let's see how many know this, <laughs> or am I singing alone? Number 440. Yes, that's right. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign, my gracious Redeemer. My Savior art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love Thee because Thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I time to love Jesus it is now amen go with me as we as we pray please dear God my heavenly father we come before your throne of mercy this morning just thank you dear God for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us dear God with all the things that are going on in this world dear God we know that you are always with us dear God and we know that you will always protect us and keep us and you keep us safe and we just want to thank you dear God for that we thank you for allowing the government to open back up dear God and allowing those hard-working individuals to get back to work we thank you dear God for just waking us up this morning allowing us to come here to fellowship one with another dear God to lift you up in praise dear God to just give back a portion of our time to just say thank you dear God for just being with each and every one of us every single day. We ask that God that you will bless those who are in transit, who are still trying to make it here, those that are traveling back from distant places, trying to make it back home, dear God, that you will just 
put a protective shield around them, dear God, that they will be able to be safe in their travels, that, be, that they will be able to make it back home unscathed, dear God. We ask that you open our hearts and minds as we will uh, partake in, in worship this morning, dear God, that we, do, that we will be able to hear the word, that we will be able to rejoice in song, that we will be able to lift you up in every action that we undertake this morning, dear God, to just give back and give praise and glory and honor unto your name, dear God. We ask that you will be with each and every one of us in our hearts and our minds, that we will be able to do it in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable unto you. All these blessings and thanks we ask in Christ our Lord and Jesus' name. Let us all together say, Amen. Number 55, please. Number 5, 5. <laughs> now it's time for that bass line. Number 5. <laughs> Beyond this land of parting, losing and leaving, far beyond the losses, darkening this, and far beyond the taking and the bereaving, lies a summer land of bliss, land beyond so fair and bright, land be land be. Where is the night? Summer land, God is the light. Oh, happy summer land of bliss. Do we know this one? No. Okay, so much for that one. I mean, I could do it the rest of the song. <laughs> I just happen to be. I just happen to be happy today, so. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Let's do one eleven. One one one. One eleven. I do believe I have heard this one here. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just a quick thought. <laughs> Sometimes you have an opportunity to travel. And when you travel, my thought has been since I was baptized, that since God never took a vacation on me, because I was still alive to get baptized through all that I have been through, why would I want to take a vacation on him? So I'd find different congregations of the church and fellowship with them, sing with them, and learn new songs. So sometimes I don't remember where I heard a song, but we heard this one here, so we know this one. <laughs> Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord and thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne. To Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew a God, but to Children of the heavenly King may speak their joys abroad. May speak their joys abroad. We are marching to Zion. It's that beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. City of God, the hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly field. 
field before we reach the heavenly fields or oh, walk the golden streets or oh, walk the golden streets we keep on marching to Zion beautiful beautiful Zion we're marching upward to Zion the beautiful city of God let our songs abound and every to be dry we're marching through the man was ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high to fairer worlds on high. All together we're marching to Zion. Yes, sir, that beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Together we're marching to Zion. It's that beautiful, beautiful Zion. Sing upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. The church say amen. We're certainly thankful to God for all that he has done for us, all he continues to do for us. Um, and it's at this point in time that we come together to pray together, um, certainly to give thanks to God for, for, for him and just his, his many many blessings and and uh, uh if you wouldn't mind before we get into our prayer request if you could turn with me to song what's that 421 421 in 421 love lifted me in 421 421 love lifted me let us sing i was sinking deep in sin far from peaceful shore very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea he heard my sparing cry from the waters lifted me now safe and oh well you know that love lifted even me love lifted me when nothing else could his love he lifted hallelujah love lifted even me love lifted even me and when nothing else could help his love lifted me a soul's in danger look above cause jesus completely says he will lift you by his love out of the end Ways. He's the master of the sea and billows his will obey. He, your savior, wants to be, be saved. 
as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. I'm so tempted to give an editorial comment. <laughs> Let me be quiet. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaketh in you, if you let him speak through you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they perse persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The dis That's verse 23. I encourage you to read through to verse 24. Help you understand how when you walk, it's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. Keep walking forward. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Would you turn with me to number 438? 438. Trust we know this one. I'm pretty sure we do. Can't hear me? Okay. 438. I trust we know this one. Let's do one, one, two, and four. Number 438. 
I'm always so loud every other time. <laughs> Number 438. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Number 37, if you would, please. Now, this one I have to ask because I don't know if I've heard this one here before. Number 37, angry words? And there's a no. Number 50. Number 50. Half and half, I know. I do the best I can. <laughs> number, <laughs> number 50. I'm sorry, I'm just so happy to be singing praises to the Lord, so excuse me for being a little bit tilted. <laughs> Let us sing number 50. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing? Or you That's going to be too high. That's going to be too high, sorry. Have you, have you, been, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His graces? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb. Are you 
mansions bright, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the, blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? All your garments spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Won't you lay aside those garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul so unclean oh be washed in the blood of the Lamb are you washed, are you washed in the blood in the, blood, in in the soul cleansing blood of, of the Lamb of the Lamb are your garments spotless are they white are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Of the Lamb, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And before I hear our message this morning, prayerfully this is one that you know, because I just wrote down the number, so I can't tell you the title. And this is not the version that I'm familiar with. How about number 197? Number 197. Let us sing. Have thine own way.
touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold o'er my being. this morning, started you on your way, uh, uh, you wouldn't be here without him, uh, he, he blessed you yesterday, he blessed you last week, he blessed you all the years of your life up until this point right now, I say again, God is good, and all the time, mm -hmm. even when we are worthless, even when we are trying him. Even when we don't want to forgive other folk, he still is gracious, mercy. God is good. Amen. 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 It is certainly a blessing to be here uh, this morning. Have thine own way. Oh, Lord. Have thine own way. Amen. Amen. Now that's a song. I like that song. I, I like that song. I, I asked Brother brother Ron to, to, to stay up and sing it because uh, I ain't sharp on that song. But uh, it's, 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 it's have thine own way. Lord have mercy. That's a quest. That's, that's a statement. Amen. Do we sing it better than we mean it? Than we feel it? Lord, some these songs, they ought, to, they ought to get us to ask ourselves questions. Amen. Amen. It certainly is a blessing to stand before you. That ain't the sermon we ain't even starting yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been sermon point one. Anyway, but uh, uh, it, it's certainly a blessing to be here. Had the pleasure yesterday to travel with Brother Chet and Quahim and Laron. Travel down to Annapolis, Maryland. To the Capital Church of Christ, their youth rally they had there had an excellent time. Had an excellent time. Um, they they had the adult session and and Brother Bean. If y'all remember Brother Bean, he was a uh, he, uh, he 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 preached the whole house down. And it was like, well, I ain't gonna be here tomorrow, so you know I had to do what I had to do. And then his cousin Isaiah Owens uh, from North Carolina, he came up and he did something just just he, he broke the word down and and and. Uh, and uh, I know Laron and Quahim will understand. Uh, some of y'all might understand when I say this, but come through dripping. They ain't paying attention. Come through dripping. Thank, thank you, Quahim. It's, it's all good. Drip, drip. Uh, the preacher got up there and said that the, the beloved sister, uh, uh, Cardi B, she wrote a song. And, uh, and I was like, man, I, when, now when he sung it, I, I didn't want to admit it. I knew exactly what he was talking about. But uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, 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 the, the word was just impactful and powerful yesterday. So certainly just thankful. Thankful. Uh, I, I'm going to show some pictures a little bit later during the announcements. But uh, both, um, so Quahim and Laron were both on uh, battle, battle, Bible battle teams. Quahim's team won overall. But I want y'all to understand, it's a team of four children each. Laron and Quahim, team one answer, right? It was like, nah, that ain't it. It's that first answer. It was like, yeah. Most of the answers they said they got right. I was like, yeah, Camden in the house. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Quite proud, stood firm. Uh-huh, that's us right there, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was that was that was it was it was great to see, great to be a part of that event and and just ever so thankful for all that God is uh 
all that God is doing. Well, if y'all don't mind opening your Bibles to the scripture that was read to your hearing, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 23, it's on the screen as well in the New American Standard, uh, which I'll be reading from, but Matthew chapter 10, verse number 16, hmm. hear all that good preaching yesterday, and I was like, I wanted to preach. Hmm. So my mind has been in, in, in several places and just, just thankful for all that, that God is, is doing. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 23. <laughs> the Bible says again, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to the courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say for it will be given you in that hour what you are to say for it is not you who speak but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you brother will betray brother to death and a father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death you will be hated by all because of my name. But it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. And all God's people said, Amen. If you've ever applied to a job before in the modern age, if you will, even if you have experience in the field, they give you what's known as a job orientation, right? This is to get you familiar with the work that you're about to endeavor on, processes, how stuff works in this particular environment. But what's interesting about the onboarding process is that many companies now offer a test to put you in various situations to see what you would do. Hmm. I remember hearing when I worked at Best Buy and I was in loss prevention, I was the yellow shirt at the door. Um, I stopped anything. If you stole from that Best Buy, you couldn't get past me at all. Brother stole a Fruitopia drink. I tracked him down with the cameras, stopped him at the door, was like, you really think you're going to drink some fruit punch in my store? And I not find out. It was serious, anyway. Uh, well, it's quite interesting because I was already mentally and we least prepared. <laughs> I scared that boy half to death. Uh -huh. But mentally, in the interview, they start to drop certain things to you. If you're in this particular environment, what do you do? If you're in this particular environment, that happens and that happens, what do you do? Well, church, can I tell you something? They weren't the first to do it. Amen. They weren't the first to do it. As a matter of fact, we have a, 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 our job orientation right here in the scripture. Amen? Here in the scripture reading, just like seeing Jesus getting scourged, scourged in the passion of the Christ, we're giving information on an eye-opening glimpse into our vocational work. What I mean by that? Passion of the Christ, I remember speaking to some friends that, that I had grown up with in the church, and, and some of them, they said, I couldn't, I couldn't handle watching Jesus getting beat like that. I couldn't understand it. And I'm like, you ain't never do no, like a little question, what does that word mean? What does that mean? How did they do it? And it's like when you saw it visually, it made it real for a lot of folk. Because Jesus of Nazareth, you ain't have all that. You saw him get whipped, but you would see the whip going, and then you see his shoulder and his face, and that's all you saw. They showed everything, Lord Jesus. So here in the scripture reading, we're going to look at our vocational work. If you'd lend me your heart and ears to this thought, the trial of a witness, the trial 
of a witness. Of course, in saying that, it's, it's really a play on words. The trial, trials and tribulations of a witness, a witness of God and his gospel. Amen. We're finishing today our series on the beginning. <clears throat> beginning, or this being the beginning of the year, this is our, uh, this study has really been our, our next step. Our mind, getting our minds right to go to the next level in ministry here in Camden. Uh, this has been focusing really on what's needed for us to reach the next level in God's service. Amen. In the past few weeks, we examined Luke chapter 5, seeing Jesus in the recruiting of his apostles uh, and observing that trusting God is necessary. Amen. You can't do nothing without trusting God. You can know him. You can love him, but if you don't trust him, nothing else works. Amen. We examine John chapter 4, seeing Jesus reaching out to people who were, o who were overlooked. And in the same way, uh, what we grasped was that we got to open our eyes to see there are people that have been overlooked that are looking for the Savior. Amen. Last week, we examined Matthew 9, leading right into our scripture reading this morning. But in Matthew 9, we saw Jesus preach the good news of the gospel with great compassion, uh, uh, understanding and observing that when we go, like he goes, we got to have that heart of love and compassion when teaching and sharing with others. Amen? So this week, with all of that in mind, our focus is to understand this road so that we maintain our enthusiasm and compassion. Amen? It's to maintain understand this road so that we maintain our enthusiasm and our passion. Lord Jesus, it's real easy. Follow me now. It's real easy to be like, man, can't wait to get out here and share the gospel with so many lost souls. And go out there and someone say, boo. And then it's like, I can't do this no more, Lord Jesus. Why did you put me in this precarious situation? It, it just, it's just a shocker, amen? So, before we actually get into the, the scripture reading this morning we know the mission right we know the mission we always call it the great commission seen in those three parts of those three gospels the synoptics some would say John 3 points to it as well but we see uh, 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 all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth go ye therefore baptize all Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things wherein I have commanded. Lord, I'm with you to the end of the age. We heard Mark preach the gospel to every creature. That's King James. Preach the gospel to all creation. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that disbelieves shall be condemned. Luke chapter 24 and verse 24 it says, Beginning in Jerusalem, that, that, that the repentance and forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed beginning right there in Jerusalem and you'll be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. We understand the mission, amen? We even understand the how of the mission. He said it several times right there. He said, look, go, teach, preach. It's all relative. Go, preach, teach. Now we understand the how. We understand the mission. But what needs to be refreshed and spoken about plainly is the road of a seed sower. Amen. We spoke of the heart of compassion that each saint must have in witnessing to the world. That can't change when times get tough. Amen. Rough as it is, tougher it can't change when times get tough. Let me drop it. A seed sower does just that. I just sow the seed. Amen. I ain't trying to fight with you to get here. Look here, I just need to drop the seed off. If I drop the seed off, I will die in peace. Knowing I did my job. Amen. Because the decision really is with whomever the seed is being dropped upon. Amen. But our compassion, as we walk through this road, our compassion, it can't change. Verse number 16. We begin examining the scripture. Jesus says a statement that doesn't make sense. He says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. Lord, have mercy. 
Plainly put, Jesus explains, I'm sending you out as sheep. If you have a pen right, right next to the verse where sheep is, pray. Not P-R-A-Y, P-R-E-Y. Pray. And in the, ver in the part of the verse that says wolves, if you got space right next to the line, predators. I'm sending you out as prey in the midst of predators. Hmm. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. It's not on the border of the wolves. It's not just near the boat they cross the street, we right here. No, no, no. It's right in the middle of them. Side by side with them. Did y'all know predators and prey, they don't hang out? Amen. Amen. Predator and prey don't hang out, why would they? Prey ain't trying to get ate every minute. And the predator like, this too easy. They don't, you see, it's an abnormality. It doesn't make sense. Very much, and, 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 and very much the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God does not make sense, truth be told. It, it, it's weird, amen? It, uh, amen. Uh, 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 so, so, so ain't nothing like being, you, you know how good it felt? I don't want y'all to go in remembrance and then go out there and do it, but y'all know how good it felt? When someone cuss you out, and you just cuss them right back out and don't feel bad about it at all? Y'all been there? Y'all been there? Or when you're driving down the road and somebody waves to you, but they just use one finger? It ain't that one. But they just use one finger, and you ain't got no problem just being like, hey, roll down the window, and, and, you, just, and you feel good about yourself, amen? Somebody, your boss snap on you at your job, you turn around, snap right back. It just feel good. But being a Christian is, is, is abnormal to that, because that's normal. So someone cuts you out, you might just, you have a blessed one. I'm, I'm going to help y'all. If you can't say that, I'm going to just help. Just be like, all right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Say it as least as possible because if you finna cuss back, that ain't good either. But, but that, that, the abnormality, okay, that's how you feel. I got you. It's abnormal. Folk look at you like, you ain't here, cuss you out. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's, it's all good. I'm good. I'm, just go ahead. Somebody wave at you. And you just in the car and, and you see them and you, they just waving at you with that one finger and you just like, God bless them. It's weird. Amen. You controlling your mouth when your boss done cussed you out. Your boss is wrong and he cussing you out or she cussing you out and you just standing there. Okay. And everybody looking like, why you ain't telling them they was wrong? Ain't the right time. It looks Weird because the way, the way that society is, I'm going to just use a driving example. If you've been in any other country in the Caribbean or even if you've been to England, they drive on what side of the car? They drive on the right side of the car. Of the car. I ain't talking about the road. They drive on the left side of the street. So it's like driving a right side drive car on the left side of the road in America. It's strange. It doesn't look right. Something about it. Just, wait a minute, this don't make sense. Even, even Lord Jesus was in Jamaica a few, more than a few years ago. But uh, for my grandmother's funeral, we driving around. And my uncle had a Toyota Camry. It's a left side drive vehicle. So I'm used to hopping in just for fun in the left side of the car. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to drive the car today. And I hop into the driver's seat. And I'm like, what? This doesn't seem right because I know where I'm at. The kingdom of heaven is abnormal. And in the same way, if you're a if you're prey, you're not trying to save your predator. Y'all ain't heard. If you are prey, you're not trying to save the predator. If you are a sheep, you're not trying to save the wolf. Amen. It's different. But he says, look, be shrewd, be sharp, be sharp, be shrewd, think, be wise, some versions would say. All that means is be practically sensible. Be practical in what you're doing. Be sensible in what you're doing, but do it as a serpent. Serpents get around all kind of ways, amen? 
Be mindful of your purpose. Your purpose is to share the gospel. Your purpose is to drop a seed. But be careful of how you do it. Be wise as a serpent, but be innocent as a dove. That means don't bite them. Don't try and choke them. Amen. But get around. Be careful how you get around. Lord Jesus, if I could give an example. The Charleston, South Carolina shooting uh, uh, at the, 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 the church down there with the, the minister, uh, Clementa Pinckney. Uh, with Dylan Roof. He walked in there during a prayer service and met with the minister and then afterwards sat there throughout the service and when they bowed their heads to pray, picks up his firearm and kills nine people. And then when they got him, he was trying to start a race war. And then when they got him and they arraigning him and the media had the audacity to ask members of that church do you forgive him? Lord Jesus, forgiveness is a process. It is not an instantaneous thing. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness, real talk, ain't got nothing to do with them. It got everything to do with you. Amen. Dylan Roof still is not sorry for what he did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but just like how we sin and we ain't sorry, but God still forgives. Y'all don't understand grace. Y'all understand grace and mercy. Look here. So they look in and, and the camera is on the church and they say, do you forgive the shooter? And they're like, now we got to think. If we say no, they're going to bash us the moment they get their chance. What kind of church is this? What kind of Christians is y'all? Ain't it interesting? They ask Christians would they forgive, but every non-Christian, okay, not forgiven. Be careful. Shrewd. They say they forgave him. That's the process. They say we are forgiving him. I read right through it. They said they're for, they forgave him. That ain't what they said. They said the people at that church said we're forgiving them. We in the process. But they had to be mindful of shrewd as a serpent. Innocent as a dove. Not to come up. How you going to ask me some question like that? But to be wise in how they answered. Because the worst thing to, that could have come out of that was to make God look bad. So they had to be in the same way. Lord Jesus, I'm going to just let y'all know. I'm not going to tell the story, but talk to Dominique sometime about when she was in school. In, her, in women's studies and transgenders were in there. And it was, a, it was a session of bashing Christians and those who believe anything like them. And she, wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove, answered and left respected well, don't know if they respected her opinion or respected her stance, but she left respected as opposed to leaving like this ain't the class for you. Amen. Let's let's walk. We we we're gonna set in one verse a, 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 a bit too long, but but let, let's walk a little bit. Then God gives them a warning in verse number seventeen, what he says, uh, seventeen and eighteen, where he says, "But beware of men, for they will hand you over." to the courts and scourge you in their synagogues and you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Beware of men because they're going to hand you over first chance they get. Beware of men because they're going to scourge you in their synagogues. In their synagogues, Lord Jesus. You know scourging couldn't happen in a place of worship. But they would scourge them. I'm talking about whip them. Same way. If you see passion in Christ, that's scourging. Only thing they left out was them throwing the salt. Amen. Skirt, they want to hurt you because you pray to them. You are praying to them. Amen. Huh. But he said, you're going to be brought before kings and governors for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Lord, can I tell y'all something? If I could drop this on y'all for a quick moment. You, mm -hmm. you are in the position you're in right now for a purpose and your purpose hear me when I say this your purpose is not for what you might think it is your purpose is for God's purpose Paul was brought before kings governors and consulates and he testified of God I'm not asking you to raise your hand but how many of us in the positions that we're in have tried to share a seed of the gospel in the positions we are in right now. I ain't talking about trying to get to high. I'm talking about where you are right now. Amen. Lord, sometimes what if it's a terrible environment and you're in it, you might be the best thing to have ever happened to it. 
Amen. Hear me when I say, you might be the best thing because God put you there for a reason. I don't like my job. I don't like how this stuff going. I just pray for a better job. God bless you with a better job. And all of a sudden, I don't like this job. I don't like this. But the reason he keep putting you in them circumstances and in that situation is for you to drop the seed of the gospel so that the situation get better. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Along with what he says here, we jump to verse 21 and 22 where the Bible says, Brother will betray brother. Lord Jesus. Brother will betray brother. Father will betray child. Children will rise up against their parents. In that time and in other places on the earth today, they put them to death. He shares division will happen. People will hate you. Okay. I like, okay, all right. So one of the things I hate in today's society is that word hating. Because... Hating ain't hating. Y'all know what hating is? Let me use, so you, you come to school. Huh, that's what you think of it most part. But you go to school, you go somewhere, and you dress fresh to death. You know what I'm saying? You come through dripping. I just taught y'all something. Let me stop. <laughs> but you come through looking sharp. Everybody, oh, man, what kind of, and, 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 and somebody, like, he don't look all that. <laughs> we call that hating. But you know what real hating is? Real hating. Because that's not hating. That's, that's just, that's a, a foolish criticism. You know what real hating is? Real hate, real hating. Real hating is, is Saul standing here and because Stephen is filled with the Holy Spirit and proclaims the word, they killed him. That, that's real hating. Amen? That, that's real hating. I want you to die. That's real hating. Amen? No, can, can we just if, see if we frame it in the right place? See, gangsters when they run in, or people when they run around talking about, oh, that dude on my nerves and I stab him, I kill him. That's real hating. When I want to end you, that's real hating. This whole I disagree with you, that ain't hating. Now, the whole country hating the Cowboys, that might be a little bit of hating. But look here. Amen. Ain't no Cowboys fans in here. I hope not. I, I love Sister Doris face. She's like, what's that? Cowboy. I never knew you. Depart from me. You work of iniquity. Leron talking about he Cowboys fan. Pray for him. Anyway. <laughs> Some of my friends going to hear this sermon like, Ken, how you going to preach against the Cowboys? Because the Bible says eagles mount up with wind. Anyway, yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> and the church said, uh, Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If y'all listening, fellas, uh, the church hating on y'all too. Anyway. But, but real hating is to want someone's existence extinguished, out of the way, thrown to the side, discarded. Ironically, last week we were, in, we were in Matthew 9, and that was the thing where Jesus said he looked on them with compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Why? Because they had been disheartened. They had been thrown to the side, dispirited. Same thing. Hating is a very ugly, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but it's a very ugly thing. Somebody make fun of you, that ain't necessarily an ugly thing. Because sticks and stones will never hurt me. Wait a minute. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words that, that's a lie too. But, 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 but words, but words, truth be told, words ain't hate. Follow, follow me on this one. Follow, follow me on where we're going. This is all your job description, church. Y'all heard me. This is your work environment. This is our work environment. This is what Jesus is saying to them. We could read Acts, we read the letters, and we see this is literally what happened to them. But it doesn't change the fact it's our work environment as well. Amen? But he makes a statement at the end of verse number 22, and he says, you will be hated by all because of my name. But it is the one who has endured to the end who will be saved. He shares the environment, but he says there is hope. There is a fixed hope. And the only thing is that the hope 
is based upon your endurance. Huh. If I could talk to you for a quick moment about persecution. Persecution, it is defined as hostility and ill treatment. It's a persistent annoyance. Physically or mentally, it is designed to try to destroy you. That's what real persecution is. Persecution is a constant attack on you. Not, I don't like you, but it's a constant attack on you, on your character, on who you are, on the God you serve. Amen? So if I could give you three practical tips, three practical tips on how to get over, get through, and endure to the end, first and foremost, pray regularly for comfort and for strength. Amen? Amen? You know, truth be told, I, I should have scratched comfort off of that because this is an uncomfortable job. Amen? But pray for strength. Read regularly. Read the word of God regularly. Amen? Amen? Read it for its encouragement. Read it because it builds you up. Amen? The third thing is fellowship regularly for edification. Lord, we can serve. Iron sharpens iron. Amen? That's Bible now. Iron sharpens iron. You can't get sharper at running away from the church. Amen. We ought to build off one another. Lord Jesus, for those that show up on the Thursday night when we pray together, Lord, we all we, rubbing off on each other. Amen. Amen. Laughing though, sometimes. But being able to lean on your brother, your sister, and pray together. Y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying. It's, it's all about, that's why I can say it's ginger tea night and everybody busts out laughing. That's present on the Wednesday night Bible. So y'all, y'all hear me? Why? Because it's building. It's one of them things. Bill's looking around. Because Bill's was one of them too. Yo, yo, we got that ginger tea tonight, though. <laughs> Rubbing up shoulder to shoulder. Iron sharpens iron. But, be, but because we're together. Amen. I'm not just talking about here either. I'm talking about outside of these walls. We need each other. If you were to look at Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew uh, uh, 10 earlier, 1 through 7, and how he sent his apostles out, as a matter of fact, the, the bridge between Matthew 9 and Matthew 10 is actually Luke 13, where he says he sent 70 out two by two. They weren't by themselves, amen? But they went with their part. Fellowship is necessary for edification. If I drop a fact on you, Relating to our work environment. Church, nobody, listen to me, nobody persecutes you because you are a Christian. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm lying. No one persecutes you because you're a Christian. Did you know that? No one persecutes you because you're a Christian. That doesn't seem right. Let me explain it. They persecute you because you don't hide that you're a Christian. They persecute you because you won't shut up about being God's child. They persecute you because you are proud to be Christ's own. That's why folk get into the persecuting business. When they say, well I do this, this and the other. I love when having conversations with some folk and, and one brother, I just had to keep it real with him. He said to me, we kind of cool. And he said, hey, oh, pastor, oh, I, I guess I can't cuss around you because you a pastor. I said, playboy, you entitled to go to hell. He stared at me like, well, I, my, my decisions ain't yours. So you can choose not to live in self-control. That's fine. But, but, but mind you, your reward going to be yours. Mine going to be mine. If not for the relationship to understand, look, I don't tolerate it around me. But if you choose, that's fine. Just recognize it ain't happening in my house. It ain't happening in my car. Because if it happened in my house and he there, you got two violent offenders coming at you. Amen? Uh-huh. Ken Spence. I'm going to leave my co-defendant name out the box. Amen? But the mindset is, look, the only reason folk persecute you is because of who you are. Don't hide that you're a Christian. Amen? Don't hide it. 
Uh, now, 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 y'all, y'all, y'all done been where I've been. We done been some places and seen some people just, just walking around. See, you in the supermarket and all of a sudden you hear a noise like, what is that noise? And somebody come in, can't, can't hold a tune in a bucket, but they say, every praise is to our God. You be like, amen. Um, okay. There is such a thing as repulsing people. Don't be so heavenly bound that you ain't no earthly good. Be proud to be Christ's own. Be proud to be in his kingdom. But don't vomit on folk. <laughs> Amen. Our objective is to share a gospel. To peak interest into who God is. Because Lord, this world is jacked up already. Why not get with him that gives hope? I need to, I need to hurry along. Our point this morning is actually found in verses 19 and 20 of the text where the Bible says but when they hand you over do not worry about how or what you are to say for it will be given you in that hour what you are to say for it is not you who speaks but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you as tough as this is when we fall into these situations don't be worried about what to say Amen. Don't be don't be, look, look, look. As, as as tough as these these situations can be and as hard as life can be, don't don't the spirit is in you, amen. The Bible says in Acts 2, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, and you will receive the gift of what? The Holy. That means he's with you. That means you ain't in this by yourself, amen. That means when it's rough. He's there with you. Amen. When it's tough, when it hurts, when it's scary, he's right there with you. You know, we were talking during Sunday school and talking about what not to eat. Can I tell you what y'all ought to eat? A great food that benefits you continuously every single day. It's called the B-I-B-L-E. That is the book for me. I stand on the word, the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Eating this is good for your whole body. It's good for your mind too. Because if it's in you, it's bound to come out. Amen? If it's in you, it's bound to come out. Don't discount the spirit. Show enough, the spirit of God is with us. So it's time we're in some precarious situations not sure what to say and it's like, where that come from? Don't discount the spirit and say, it just came out of nowhere. Amen. Can I give y'all an example? Before I get there, look here. We got to maintain our energy. Amen. We have to maintain in understanding this road that we tried. We have to maintain our enthusiasm as well as our compassion. Amen. Look, I'm going to tell you an honest truth, and I don't care who hears it, if they cuss me out later or not. I'm not concerned about everybody that goes to church somewhere. You know how many people don't go to church at all? It's a lot more than them. I don't want to. We can have them studies and them arguments about Bible and all that stuff. We can do that. But there are so many souls out here that don't know Jesus. I don't have time to get into theological argument. There, are, there is time for that. But my main thrust of my, my focus, I got to plant a seed in, fo in soil that has never been touched. Amen? If it ain't never been touched, that's the best harvest. I'm just saying. Amen? Y all, y all might, y all might, some of y'all might look at me funny. That's fine. But I'm going to sow a seed where seed can grow. Amen? This is a picture of Miriam Yahia Ibrahim Ishag. In 2014, she was, uh, she's from the Sudan. She got married in the Sudan, but in 2014, she was arrested. She was arrested. Now, her story goes like this. Her father was a Muslim, married her mother, who was a Christian. And she was, the father left, and she lived with the mother from, she was young all the way up until uh, she was older. She had gotten married, and someone in her family that was Muslim on her father's side 
reported her to the courts. She got married to a Christian man and she reported her to the courts for adultery. That was the accusation. Because her father was Muslim, it was stated that her marrying a Christian was apostasy. She said, I'm not Muslim, I'm a Christian. And so when they got her, they said, you have three days to denounce Christ. If you don't, we're going to tell you, we're going to sentence you. Three days passed by, she did not denounce Christ. So what happened? At the end of three days, when she wouldn't renounce Christ, they said, your sentence is death. She was sentenced to die in prison at eight months pregnant. She had her child in prison, but she wouldn't renounce. She stayed in prison away from her husband, but she wouldn't renounce. She's two or three months away from the death penalty, but she would not renounce Christ. You know, in scripture, in, in, in Sunday mornings, we had studied and seen it in Acts where God said to Paul, don't worry, I got people everywhere. And showing up, church, I want you to know God got people everywhere. Amen? God got folk everywhere. I want you to know that the same woman, when, when people were protesting, it was the rest of the world saying, you best better let that woman go. Ain't no business for her to be in there. And finally, when she was released, her and her husband went to Italy. Y'all ain't, y'all, 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 y'all don't know when to shout. She got released and got out of the country. Her, her husband, and their two children. She's not been back since. Now the mindset is, what would have happened if she renounced Christ? But she would not renounce Christ. She would not denounce him like, I've been raised following Christ my whole life. Why would I get to this point? Would I ever give him up? Facing the death penalty, why would I dare to give him up? She didn't. And God delivered her. You understand that when the Spirit said, when God says that don't worry when you're in front of folk, the Spirit will give you what to say then. Look, that was real hate. That's real persecution. We are blessed to live in this country, even though, honestly, some of us sometimes don't like this country. Amen? But we're blessed to live here. That religious persecution ain't a serious thing, but look here. That means, we got, that means there's greater opportunity to do the mission of God. Amen? It's a greater chance. It's greater for us to get our work done. Lord Jesus, God is good. Maybe, maybe, I'm not certain who's, maybe you're here and thinking about this Christianity thing might not be for me. I'm talking to the unchurched now. We will, at, we will all, at a certain point in time, go through persecution. Amen. We'll go through persecuting circumstances because of how we live. When I say how we live, I'm talking about our behavior as Christians. How we conduct ourselves, it naturally can rub some people, some people wrong. Some people might not want to hear what the word says. Some people might say, oh, he's, he, uh, it, it's ridiculous now. Just in certain ways, if you're going into a job, you, 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 I think I told y'all about when I applied to AutoZone many years ago and, and, the, and the manager, she said to me, like, look, if, we understand that you preach, but wh- how you speak in here, it represents the company. You can't speak in a derogatory way to individuals who are homosexual or individuals who are transgendered. And I said, Okay, she said, but because you represent us, you can't speak it out there. I said, you got a problem then. Because I represent God before I represent anything else. So that means if that man over there and he cheating with his wife, I'm going to say something. Cheating on his wife, I'm going to say something. Amen. This brother over here running, if that sister over, if, if anything wrong finna take, but I got to say something because of the God whom I serve. Amen. As rough as it is, look, you might be thinking this ain't, look, there is nothing better than being in Christ. And the reason I say that is because what God said in the descriptor of the environment that we are in 
is the environment all of us are in. Brothers are already betraying sisters. Fathers are already betraying children. Children are already rising up against their parents. Y'all ain't heard me? This is already taking place. Why go through hell? As one preacher said, to end up right there at the end. Why go through hell to not hold on to hope? To have no hope to hold on to? Why not come to Christ? Why not be in Christ where hope lives? Where his love exists? Amen? It only makes sense. Look here. I, I, I share with you, I was 12 years old when I obeyed the gospel. I was 10 years old when I said, I need to obey the gospel. And as tough as that was, I sat there, I made that decision, and, and, and it kept getting blocked. I think I know why. But it kept getting blocked. But at 12, and my, my, my natural reaction was to be like, look, what, like, what testimony you got? Well, I understood that sinners have no access to God. So when trouble comes up in my house, the blessing might not reach me because I'm not connected to him. So I needed to obey the gospel so I could be connected to him because everything my mother went through, as much as she said she always prayed for me and my brother, she has no idea we was praying for her too. Amen? That's a little kid with no testimony. As tough as it is, I got to pray for my mother when I was coming up. As tough as life is, Lord, we all know to have that relationship with God, Lord Jesus, ain't nothing like it. Because in any circumstance, he is a comforter. Y'all heard me? When you need strength, he'll strengthen you. When you need blessing, he'll bless you. When you need forgiveness, he'll forgive you. So look here, the opportunity is yours right now. The Bible says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. That means if you, hear, if you can hear and believe that Christ came, died on the cross, and rose three days later, or rose the third day after for all of us. If you believe that, and that he did that according to the scriptures, then that's the first step in the process. You simply got to repent. That means turn away from living without God and turn to living with him from now until the end. And then live faithful until death. That's an interesting statement right there. I found myself reading Roman Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, which is actually where that thing, well, that's from Ephesians chapter 3. But live faithful until death, Revelation 2 and 10. It actually means live faithful even if you see that death is on the horizon coming to you. To live faithful to know that this is not it. Amen? God is good. We're going to stand. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation and give you the opportunity to come. Why don't you come as we together stand and as we sing. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty souls.
our objective in walking through this time period has been to really and truly understand what our vocation and our mission is. It will not be easy. Amen? But our society, the city we live in, this city here, Camden, cannot change unless we're willing to sow seeds of the gospel in people. Amen? It's going to take trust in God. It's going to take having that same compassionate heart. It's going to be, take putting our all into the Lord, knowing that he's able. But certainly if we're willing, God will give the increase. Amen? As we prepare our hearts and our minds to remember God's God the Son, his great sacrifice on the cross. If, if you wouldn't mind singing uh, with me, that's hymn 310 in Gethsemane alone. Oh, what a wondrous love I see Freely shown for you and me By the one who did atone Just to show his matchless grace Jesus suffered for the rain it was in Gethsemane alone and a whole love matchless love Do what love for me was sure is forever I will be for the love he gave to me. All alone. Amen. I'd like to thank Brother Ken for that message. Amen. We got our young brother Leron helping us uh, this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, as it has come time for us to remember the sacrifice that was made for us, we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 23, verse, verse uh, through 34. And the Bible reads, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, Whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the Lord, excuse me, with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. These you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. I'm going to ask Brother Chet to play to, uh, to one prayer for the body and the blood, please. Father, as we turn our hearts to you, Hopefully they're always towards you, but as we turn right now specifically and intentionally our hearts to you um, at this time, this is the highlight of our week. Um, we thank you for your son's body and we thank you <coughs> for your son's blood and we thank you for what he did and what he does and what he will do one day. 
our hearts would be right before you. And that you would, in this quiet time now, as we listen and pray and as we partake of this supper, that we let you move us, your spirit, and guide us wherever uh, we're to go. And we go together, Father, because you love us all and you want what's best for us. We have work to do. Thank you for this bread and this cup, Father. Please guide us as we partake of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of mercy once again. Just thank you, dear God, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, dear God. We know that we are not deserving, but you still see fit to continue to bless us and lift us up, dear God. And we're just ever so thankful for that. So where would we be without you, dear God? We just ask, dear God, that you will continue to watch over us, bless us, that we will be good stewards of all the things that you have see, sought fit to give us, dear God. That we will be able to help those who are in need, that we'll be able to lift those up to be shy, uh, to be licensed to the world, dear God, to be an example of what it is that we're supposed to do with all the things that we have in this world, dear God, that you have sought fit to lay in front of us, dear God. We ask, dear God, that what is given will be used in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable to you, that it will be used for the uplifting of your kingdom, dear God, and to bring those who are in darkness to the light. As we give, we ask that you bless us, that our hearts will be in the right place, that we will do it in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable unto you. All these blessings and thanks we ask in Christ our Lord and Savior's name. Let us all together say, Amen. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, where we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by by God will be our pleasures there will never end. We're going to sing hallelujah, hallelujah, by and by and oh, what a joy when we get home to glory rest rest beneath that cloudless stone in heaven in that land we're singing we're gonna sing hallelujah sing hallelujah by and by and oh what a what joy when we get on rest be red beneath that cloud lit in heaven in that land we sing let down we're, we're gonna sing hallelujah Let's sing hallelujah by and by Gone will be our sadness. <laughs> Pleasures there will never end. I forgot one word. Anyway, but certainly it's good. We've had a good worship this morning. Amen. 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 Again, just a, a few announcements I'll just read to you hearing, and then I, I, I want to show you a few things. But um, uh, we, uh, hmm, beginning next Sunday, next Sunday will be the first uh, Sunday. You go, you're going after another one. That's Bless the Lord Jesus. Anyway, but um, our first Sunday, February 3rd, we'll have our fellowship meal. Um, so certainly, everybody come in. Let's, let's fellowship together. Amen? Amen, 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 amen again. Uh, coming up, of course, is our... Is that? Uh, coming up, of course, is our uh, National Association of Celebrated Seniors, the 25th anniversary uh, celebration. Uh, that flyer is not on the bulletin board. I was just looking at it. Um, but if you are interested in attending, see me, and I'll share the information with you um, as well. It's uh, coming up uh, fast approaching the beginning of May. Um, I did want to also note today after worship, um, after a bit of uh, a fellowship, Sister Dominique is actually calling a meeting with all of the sisters regarding our Ladies' Day um, that's coming up in May as well. Um, so we're asking all sisters, uh, after, I mean, we fellowship, we talk a little bit. After two minutes of chatting, Dominique will call the meeting to order, and then uh, we'll begin, our sisters will begin their meeting. If y'all don't mind, can I show y'all some, some beautiful stuff? So, yesterday we were down, uh-huh. At the Capital Church of Christ down there, you see Guahim face anyway. But uh, but uh, now you can't really see it in this picture. But they had just they were calling people up. We like what they called them for is one, two, oh no no no, it's what was it anyway? Four, three, two, one, all the way over on the other side. But what they did was they picked Bible battle teams. That is the other side, um, and they separated them. Guahim was part of Team Three. Leron was part of Team Four. Had a great time down there. Amen? Amen. They, they made Team 1 and Team 2 battle it out. And then Team 3 and Team 4, they battled it out. Uh, team 3 right there, Quahim doing his thing. Um, and then, of course, I don't know if y'all see this bag right here. Here's a better picture. 
So Quahim was on team three and his team beat everybody. So he did an excellent job down there. LeRon did an excellent job down there. And um, Dominique, you recognize that boy right there? Yeah, that's Bennett's son. Um, that, that's Bennett's son. Anyway, because anyway, you know he got the tribe. That's, that's not the last one. That's the first one. Anyway, that's another story for another day. But this is uh, some, some boy. I said I'm going to take a picture of Quahim and LeRon, and they had made two friends that jumped in the picture. We're like, all right, cool. But uh, it, was, uh, it was a great time that we had down there uh, at that youth rally. And certainly next year, we want to bring more. Amen? We had a good time. They were like, man, Camden, because I, I told them, I said, last year we bring in, and then that didn't happen. This year we come with two. So next year, we're looking to bring more. Amen? Um, it was certainly a great time. Um, and so it, as we bring more, certainly, parents, chaperones, we're going to need y'all too. Amen? <laughs> Uh, just so that we could keep uh, keep watchful eye on all of our children, but certainly it was a great time. Uh, Laron and Quahim had a great time, and uh, uh, you know they both tried to play it off. They're like, "It's cool, it's cool, it's cool," but they couldn't wait to go through the rewards that Quahim had won and so forth. So, uh, but it, it was a blessed blessed situation. Of course, Wednesday is our Bible study, Thursday our family prayer. Uh, coming up in February, that date is the wrong date. I believe it's second. Anyway. It's the third week. We'll have our men and women's classes and our nursing home singing. Um, of course, we have our app. If you don't have it, you can get it there. And before, we, before Brother Chet comes before us to close this in a word of prayer, I have heard since November, no, that's incorrect, since September of 2018, this young man who obeyed the gospel in December of 2018 had been informing me so when my birthday takes place on January 26th, y'all going to sing that Sunday, right? Y'all going to sing happy birthday to me. I'm like, Lord Jesus. So Laron, he did a great job on the table. Amen. Amen. We said, amen. Y'all give him a round of applause. Amen. Did a great job. I said, pay attention. We're going to be drafting you one of these Sundays. And show up today was the day. But um, did an excellent job. But yesterday, Laron turned 11 years old. Amen. It's about 40 of us in here, so that's 11 birthday hits times 40 people. Amen. I'm going to just, amen. <laughs> that look got nervous now. Anyway, but um, so we're going to sing happy birthday. And afterwards, um, Sister uh, Shakira, she had brought cake for him that we can all partake in. Amen. Celebrate a four layer cake, a fortnight cake. Oh. I still don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> Y'all must parents be paying me like, yeah, on their phone, on the console, on the computer. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I like to keep my child in the dark. He gonna get what is known as a Nintendo 64. <laughs> that his daddy used to have. <laughs> yeah. At any rate, um, so, so y'all ready? We're gonna sing it. Count of three. One. Two, three. Happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday, dear Laron. A happy birthday to Amen, 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 amen. We certainly gonna close out in the word of prayer. And if I if I if I could just say if I could just say one quick thing. If I oh Nate singing happy birthday. If I could just say one quick thing. Um most children want to have fun their entire birthday. And Laron was like, Well, I'll go with you, brother, brother. Now he thought everybody going down, down there was gonna sing him happy birthday. It didn't happen. But um but he still was like he went for his birthday, he went to a youth conference. And that's the mindset we want to kind of have our young people having. Amen? Amen. With that, let's stand to be dismissed as Brother Chet comes before us to close us in a word of prayer. Father God, we're just so blessed to be here and to share in this uh, supper, this table, and the breaking of your word, again, from Matthew 10. And there's so much there for us, Lord. Uh, it's for us as much as it was for Peter and James and, and all of those guys. 
And Father, it's a privilege to see pictures of Christians in other places like this lady from the Sudan. And we do pray for those in the Sudan and, and in northern Nigeria and uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia and so many places in the world that truly do undergo real hating. Father, we thank you for Laurent and all of us remember birthdays that we've had. Some of us can still remember our 11th birthday, maybe if we thought long and hard, but today we're, we're enjoying and relaxing and, and just relishing in the excitement of Laurent's birthday, and that's a special thing. And we thank you that Quahim's here, too. And Father God, we're thankful that he was born very recently into your family, that no matter what Satan has in store for Laurent, uh, it, it's nothing, it's nothing that he can't overcome through your blood, Lord Jesus, and through faith in you. And you're going to fight his battles, Father. He's going to be a hard-fighting soldier. Quahim will one day put you on in baptism and through faith, and he'll be a hard-fighting soldier. And all of us, Father, will, as iron sharpening iron, as Brother Ken said from Proverbs, sharpen one another as we are all hard-fighting soldiers. It's a great privilege it's a great privilege. Thank you, Father God. You're so good in Jesus' name. And please strengthen our bodies if that's possible with uh, sugary cake. Uh, at least we'll have some energy help us to use it wisely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.